dish out some food. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Jim here and you're watching another episode of Jimmy in the Wild. Today I get to go walleye fishing with two really awesome outdoorsmen. Rick Claproth who lives just a stone's throw from where we'll be fishing today and my cousin Mike Connor. Both of these guys have logged some serious hours fishing. Rick is on the lake three to five days a week and my cousin Mike got to fish a ton when he was stationed in Guam with the Navy. Before we get started be sure to click the subscribe button you don't want to miss future outdoor adventures. The lake we're going to be fishing today is called Poison Reservoir. Poison Reservoir is another very large man-made body of water in the high desert of central Wyoming. The Wind River is the main river that enters and fills the lake. Also, it's really important to get out early for walleye, because walleye head to deeper parts of the lake towards the midday when it gets too warm. And since it's midsummer, the water's already 72 degrees and the air temp's going to be about 95. We'll be launching Rick's boat from the Tough Creek boat ramp, which is just north of the town of Shoshone. Then we'll head south a little towards the inlet of the lake. We're going to be trolling with crankbaits today. We'll be fishing with four poles on a very small boat today, so we'll have to use side planers to help us space out the crankbaits. The side planers are very easy to attach to the line and they won't hurt the line. Also, if you drop a side planer in the water, you don't have to worry because they float and you can circle back around and get it. You also have to make sure you detach the side planer from the line when you're reeling in a fish, but it's not really hard to do at all. Side planers move out away from the side of the boat when trolling by using the force of the water and the shape of the side planer. The crankbaits will vary in color, size, shape, and their trolling depths. The trolling depth of the crankbait is determined by the size of the lip on the front near the point where it attaches to the line. When pulled through the water, crankbaits with larger lips dive deeper while crankbaits with small lips dive shallow. Many of the crankbaits are designed to look like mini versions of larger fish and some are designed to look like crawfish or maybe even insects. Rick pretty much knows where all the fish in this lake hang out, especially since he's here three to five days a week. Rick also showed us which crankbaits to use to reach an assortment of depths on each of the four poles. This helped to determine at what depth the fish would bite most. And this definitely increased our chances of catching more fish. In fact, most of the fish were caught at 15 to 25 feet deep, so we changed the other crankbaits to target the most fish in this zone. All right, let's get the poles set up so we can start catching some walleye. Oh, we got a fish up there. This one? Yeah, that's fish. That's a fish. That's We were targeting larger fish, but we started the day by catching a few smaller fish. We let the smaller fish go and kept trolling for the big ones. We knew with Rick's guidance and knowledge of the lake, it was just a matter of time before we hooked into the big fish. Nice fish, Mike. Now I need to start catching the larger fish too. Remember, walleye are toothy and spiky fish. Notice how careful Mike is when he takes them off the hook. Do you think that he's gotten poked by them at some point? Luckily, walleye have fairly rough skin and he can hold on to them pretty well. Definitely a great photo op. Trolling with side planers is a great way to maximize the number of fishing poles on a boat, but quite often it takes some experience to know when a fish is taking the crankbait under a side planer. Sometimes the side planer really doesn't show much movement when something hits the crankbait. Smaller fish tend to pop up on the top surface of the water and go surfing, but with larger fish the side planer will move from the side of the boat to almost the rear of the boat. But with Rick's keen eye and experience with the side planers, we were kept busy reeling in walleye. It seemed like the fish would hit the poles with the side planers more often than the poles without. It could have been the fact that the side planers were further away from the wake of the boat, or maybe it was just luck.
Pliers definitely help get the hook out of the mouth of the walleye. Their teeth can cut you very badly, especially when they start thrashing around. And there's a big one for the cooler. The bite was definitely on for most of the morning, and we were certainly starting to smell like walleye from head to toe. It's not a bad smell, it's actually the sweet smell of success, and it means a fish fry is in the near future. Right into the box. We were worried that the bite might not be good today. That's because it's midsummer and it's about the time that most lakes in this part of Wyoming experience algae blooms. We call it the bottom of the lake turning over. Boisin has a lot of farmland nearby which contributes to a higher level of agricultural runoff. This definitely promotes algae growth. On my last walleye video, I also spoke about something known as the bottom of the lake turning over. Well, it's pretty much the same thing here. You could definitely see that it was in process and it could get much worse in the next few days, but it only lasts for a few weeks at most. Then it's back to great fishing. Oops, we probably should have taken Mike's trail mix and drinks out of the cooler before we put the fish in it. Even after we wash the fish slime off the trail mix bag, it's probably going to have that permanent fish smell. Where? Yep, eight. Him first. <laughs> Ooh, that was almost painful for Mike. Two treble hooks to the bread basket would have been a little unpleasant. Remember, if you're fishing with crankbaits, be very careful of the treble hooks. They're sharp, and it could take a trip to the emergency room to remove them if you get hooked badly enough. Crankbaits are a more expensive way to fish for walleye in the near term, but in the long term, if you get good enough and you buy the right crankbaits, you can save money. Plus, they catch lots of different types of fish. So you control with crankbaits at a slightly higher speed, about 2 miles per hour, and you can catch trout. You can also cast from the bank for perch and bass, and you can even use them for muskies and northern pike.
but it looks like it's getting hot and it's time to call it a day. We headed back to the ramp, then we headed back to Rick's place. He introduced me to his awesome wife, Echo. Hi. I'm Jim. Hi, Jim. I'm Echo. Good to meet you, Echo. Nice to meet you. That's you caught the biggest. No, he did not. So you get the prize today. There's your... I caught the biggest. Jeez. <laughs> Fisherman's toothpick knife. There's well, thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank he you. never gets... But I caught the biggest. No, that's yours. <laughs> I've got to thank Rick for taking us out on his boat and teaching us quite a bit about walleye fishing. Also, i got to thank him for the Fisherman's Toothpick Pocket Knife. It's such a cool knife, and it was definitely a pleasure meeting Rick's wife, Echo. Nine fish today. You caught more than I did. I think I caught how many of the keepers? I caught maybe four of the keepers, and you caught five keepers, and you had another three. I guess, uh, I'll show you how to fillet these guys. Uh, I guess before you for... Before you start filleting, make sure you always get the cheek right. Do that first. Mm -hmm. so and you toss that in some flour, fry that up. Yep. If you peel it back like that, it'll usually come right off the skin. Right. Must you? Sometimes you have to start it. There we go. One scallop. There we go. There's a second cheek scallop. And then we go ahead and start filleting. Be sure to use a very sharp fillet knife. And you may want to use a smaller seven inch knife. I was using a nine inch fillet knife and it seemed just a little too big for these walleye. So go along the spine, you got to feel along the spine. Kind of press your knife down against it. Get to the end. Oh yeah, and don't forget, be very careful of the sharp edge. You want to fillet the fish, but not yourself. Let's do this. Try to do this one right this time. Okay, there's the Y bones. Let's see them this time. Quite often I refer to the pin bones as the Y bones. The Y bone terminology comes from trout and salmon. In a salmon or trout, if you look at the cross section of the pin bones, it looks like both sides form the Oops. upper arms of a Y. Most fish have pin bones of varying lengths and shapes. While I have pin bones that are very small, but it's best to get rid of them to make the eating of the fillet more enjoyable. All right, so let's see what we got. That's a lot better. No Y bones this time. Nice. No collar. Slip it down between. That's how we did it. Yep. Oops, I must have. Oh no, I just slapped a rib. That's all. There we go. There's that front piece. That's a lot better. Now we're back at the kitchen, it's time to cook these fish up. All right, so we're gonna deep fry these walleye today. We've got a ton of walleye here. There's nine fish worth of fillets. And we're gonna use fish fry. We're gonna spice it up a little bit. I know it's got a little bit of spices in it, but we're gonna add some more to it. It's mostly cornmeal. Uh, it ends up tasting pretty good. We had some uh, walleye a few days ago, and it was good stuff. We're gonna go ahead and put the flour in here, put the spices in there, mix it up, roll the fish around, deep fry them until they're crispy golden brown, then we're gonna take them out. We wanna make sure we set our basket up out of the grease, got a little lip on it, and we'll start breading our fish and putting them in there. We're gonna use mesquite seasoning today. It's the blackening seasoning. Just gonna mix it up a bit. If you deep fry your fish, make sure you follow the instructions for your specific deep fryer. Most deep fryers have a maximum fill level line so you don't overfill them with oil. Also, don't put too much in the basket so the hot oil doesn't flow over the edge of the cooker when you set the basket in the oil. And remember to be safe and watch out for the hot oil. We're going to just fill the basket up full of these little pieces. We're going to do little pieces first so we don't miss them all. my wife and kids. What's that? Pretty much. Yep. That's probably enough in the basket for now. Let's go ahead and just fry those.
All right, when you go to take your fish out, we'll elevate the basket, then we'll take the fish out with the tongs. Don't want to dip these directly into the grease. They're going to get hot pretty fast since they're metal, and you're going to end up burning yourself. There we go. These fillets are a little bit thicker, so we're going to let them cook maybe six minutes. And this batch of thick fillets is done. Oh, that looks good. All right, what do you think, Rachel? All right, Cole's here. He's going to have some, too. It's really good. Hey, you want to taste some of this fish, Peyton? It's really good. Is this camera on me? There you go. Do you want to taste a piece, too, Cole? Right. Let's give you a big piece here. Mm, that's good. Mm, you like it? it doesn't even nice. Eat cool. There's a lot here, so hopefully you guys eat it all up. Oh, believe me, I can you guys want to go ahead and dish, your, dish out some food? Come, come grab yourself some food. Would you like a few more, Mom? This one is peanut butter. This one's the tea. We have some rice from yesterday. You guys can have some if you want. It's pretty good. Well, thank you for joining me on another great catch, clean, and cook adventure. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to click that big red subscribe button. You don't want to miss more epic adventures. Maybe you should get out and have your own adventure, and we'll see you next time.